Hi, welcome back. So I thought today I would do another textile landscape. So to be very clear, this is not mine. This is done out of needle felting. It's a piece of art from my own collection. And I'll turn it over and I'll tell you who it's by. So it's called Bluebell Path by Ali Scott. And I've had it for oh, 10 years, maybe more. It's got bluebells in it and I absolutely love bluebells. It's, it's like my little inner world. This is, if I lived somewhere, you know, my little my little hut's behind there somewhere. It's that time of year again. Here, it's, uh, it's bluebell time, and it has been for a couple of weeks, and it probably will go on for another couple of weeks. It smells gorgeous when you go and see them. They are a bluey purple. This is pretty accurate, the colors. In the shadows, they're purple, and in the sunlight, they are blue, almost. Okay, I found an image. So this is just if you put in bluebell wood into a search engine and go onto the images tab, this is this is what you'll get. This is an image from The Guardian. And the reason why I'm showing it to you on my tablet, I was going to print it out. And then I thought, actually, you can see how useful it is to look at something either on your computer or on a, on a tablet to change the orientation. So eventually this is going to go onto a canvas and I'll put a link somewhere how to mount your work on a canvas, uh, a pre-made canvas. So here it is a square photograph which is very nice if we zoom in we can get some more detail you can change what it looks like you can move it around you can have more bluebells and just bits of tree you can have more tree and less bluebell you can put this in the middle you can move it all around and do what you want so this is going to be my reference image. So I need to decide what I want it to look like. So for me, the most important thing is the bluebells themselves. But I don't want to do that. I think that's too much. That's a bit too modern for me. Neither do I want to do that. That loses the point completely. So rarely... I am probably going to go for that. I think that looks the nicest and most pleasing. I've broken one of the rules that I'm always saying, which is don't put anything in the middle. Don't do the horizon line or, or uh, anything in the middle, except for something like this. And actually, it isn't. that. Although it looks like the horizon line, it isn't. There's a field behind it and then there's a hedgerow. So actually, the horizon line is somewhere around here so that isn't in the middle and then what I've done is I've changed the orientation slightly and moved the path over because I think that looks more pleasing rather than having a path slap bang in the middle it looks nice but I think it looks nicer like that and at the end of the day the the important thing for me is to um, focus on these bluebells. That's what I really want to look at. So I want a goodly amount of bluebells there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly transfer the block shapes of the different colours onto just a piece of white cartridge paper here. And I know that I'm going to choose the end canvas is going to be a um, landscape it's not going to be square it's going to actually to be displayed landscape so it's going to be pretty large I'm also just going to quickly run out to my my old studio and see if I have one the right size before I cut anything out so I'm going to go and check on that first okay in answer to my question I do not have a canvas the right size so I need to buy one but I know they come in standard sizes so this is a4 printer paper this is what we use in the UK. I know it's slightly different sizes all around the world. So to your size of paper, um, there will be standard sizes of frames available. So wh whatever works properly for you. So two of these together would be A3 like that. So if I did another two, it's 16 and a half inches by 23 and a quarter on the longest measurement. So that gives you an idea of, of what sort of size I'll be working to. So I've just started sketching out some shapes. So this is a very, very, very rough drawing. From that uh, picture that I showed you, I have drawn the bluebell 
horizon line and then the field horizon line and then this scribble is supposed to represent the um, bushes in the background and then this arch is what I know I need to do is my first placement of fabric this is the path and then I've started putting in some vague indication lines and already we're just breaking it down into shapes that is nowhere near as daunting as looking at that photograph and when you're doing a textile landscape from a photograph or well even from life you need to break it down into shapes because we are using our fabric like paints but obviously we have to cut it out so this is the photograph again and then this is my picture here so you can see I've started marking out this shape on the the path now I will say on my camera here, this is looking a lot more blue than it does in real life. So I'm going to go to more towards slightly paler than this and a little more purplier. I think Cadbury's purple rather than like a sort of magenta purple. So these are the lines I've drawn in. You see um, this bit of field here, that was the line I drew in and then I've drawn, drawn in the hedgerow. And at the moment, I don't really want to worry about where the trees go because I think that would be just too confusing. But this is a sort of archway because what we need to do is we need to work from the furthest away point and that's going to go on the fabric first of all. So these bits here in the foreground, these are going to be the last things that we do. The very, very last things. So I know I need to find something that resembles sky to be that arch. And then the next shapes that I'll probably put on is I'll probably find a sort of generic green or something to um, be behind the trees you're never going to see it but it needs to be there to provide you know just a, a little bit of depth to the the picture and then the next thing I would do after that is to put a piece of organza over to knock that back so I'm going to go away and just put in the last few of these lines for the different colors and then I'll start to actually start getting stuff out to start placing it and making it look like a bluebell would. I will just show you on my picture again here. You'll see I've put a line across here and a line across there. And that's because that the bit that anything that's in front of this, I want that to be more stitched, whereas what's behind it is going to be out of fabric. Anyway, I'm gonna go and finish drawing weird lines on here and then we'll get some bits and pieces together. Right, I've had a bit of a look through to see what we're going to need and this is going to be one of those things where you do need some specific things. So here I've got some iron-on interfacing and I would say this is absolutely essential if you're going to mount this on a canvas. You could use Bondaweb at a push but obviously it's going to need backing with something before you adhere it to anything else which will make it very thick and I can't imagine how hard that would be to to cover right round a uh, canvas with all of the layers that we're going to be putting on here and then the backing layer as well but you you could at a push if you wanted to if you're not going to put it on a canvas that would totally be fine you could back it with a plain fabric and then edge it really neatly and it would look very very beautiful as a wall hanging if you wanted to do that too so this one if I can show you this is lightweight so you can see it's sort of scrunchable but it's still I can pull it a, a bit I'm not pulling it a lot but I can pull it this one if this is all you've got this is ultra lightweight this almost looks like tissue <laughs> and if you pull this it you can see it's starting to pull I don't want to rip it so be very very careful if that's all you've got but if that is all you've got then use that but just be aware we're going to put many layers of stuff on it. So today I'm going to be using just the lightweight, not the ultra lightweight. So I'll be cutting a, a nice big bit of that in a minute. I'd also say before you uh, get started with all of the exciting bit, before you get carried away like I do, you need to make sure, again, if you're putting it on a canvas, to allow an extra inch and a half all of the way around otherwise you wind up with a design that's glued onto a canvas and it looks rubbish the other things that you'll need to do this we're going to be using different organzas 
The reason why I've got this one out is because it's shot with gold and I thought it would work really, really well for the trees. You're going to get a lot of, you can see even just me doing that, a lot of variation in colours. These um, peachy off-white things, they're actually, trust me, they are two different colours. Um, I know you can barely tell that. This is to give that sort of pearlescent, like that luminous sky. Remember this is, we can look through the canopy of the trees out to the other side of a field and the light is coming through the trees. So you've got a lot of green, you've got a lot of warmth coming through that. So we don't just want stark blue. And then I've just got a standard green here, which I thought would work brilliantly well for the trees because they're a very peculiar acid green shade at the moment. So that will look fantastic on those. I'll show you on some fabrics in a minute. And then this is a slightly sort of purpley blue shot one that I've got on a roll. And I thought this would work for things like this that have got a hint of purple but that are more blue. I'm hoping if we layer some stuff up we start to build up some bluebell colours because I've got um, this one as well. So you can see obviously I'll be very strategic about the bits that I take out and this is slightly too warm but it's what I've had and I'm, I am really a sort of what I've got person but again we can knock it back and get it a bit more blue belly looking. I've literally got these pieces, this, this is it, this is all I have so we're going to work a lot of magic with a lot of scrumpled up bits of fabric and then I have a couple of options for sky this one to me looks like an um, uh, autumn or winter sky here before it starts to go very grey. I could warm this one and knock it back by putting this pale blue over it. Or I could use this one and put some of this blush over it and it starts to make it, you know, a different colour. Could also layer some blue on that as well and start to get that sky. Oh, actually, that looks quite good on camera. It looks amazing. Particularly like this bit here. It looks like the sun. Well, I think we might have found what we're going to use for the sky is actually this one. And then for greens, I've got this. Actually, I think it's going to be really useful because what I thought was if I cut out around these petals, roughly, I mean, this is just, it's like an impression of a bluebell wood, but done with fabric. So we just using bits and pieces that make the right shapes and then that will make us think, oh, it's a bluebell wood. So if you cut around these in different shapes, you've got something that looks really sort of naturalistic in clumps. Because what I found in the photograph is that the leaves look quite sort of clumpy. You know, there's patches of leaves and then there's patches of just like this green light. So I thought that might work well for those. And then I've also got an even lighter shades of green here but once you layer them up with this very bright organza again you get some really nice things going on and I particularly like this with the meadow sweet or the cow parsley on it I just thought it was really cool and then there's one with just stashes on so this one might work really well again in the foreground to give some idea of sort of stalks because to me it looks like there's sort of these stalks sticking up. I've altered my picture, I realised that I'd made the path too narrow here and that actually when I looked at it, it really curved away here and then this is all big blue bells and leaves in the path here so I just had a quick redraw and I put some of the darker lines on ready for the, the blue bell parts. And at the moment, I'm not worrying about the, the tree trunks, except I do need to worry about getting some fabric for them. But I want to focus on doing two here right now. So I'm going to go away and cut out the interfacing and then I'm going to work on this bit. And I, I probably won't talk very much through that. I think um, probably it's uh, easier to see what I'm doing rather than, you know, hear what I'm saying. So I'm going to go and cut out the interfacing and then work on this first section.
got to a point where I need to talk a little bit about what I've done and you'll see that I haven't done any sewing at all yet and that's because this section at the back is going to be covered by a lot of other things. I think I mentioned that most of this is going to be covered over. I've done the layering of the blue sky with two different layers and here I've used it to knock back this one and just here so that as we get different layers it'll look a bit more naturalistic. Now this bit here you probably saw the great big pile of fuzzy wool that came from my friend <laughs> which this is absolutely brilliant for doing trees and bushes and stuff like that. So in the back of the photograph that I was working from my reference one there's a bit of field and then there was some sort of bush stuff here that goes along a little way. I'll have to have another look at the photograph because I can't really remember. Now, I don't want it to look very, very definite. I just want an impression. So when I've sort of stitched all this in as much as I think it needs stitching in, I'm going to put a piece of this organza over the top that will hold it down and I will probably stitch more of the shape in so you'll get sort of almost like this quilted look and I think that will knock back the hedge part really really well. So I'm actually at the point now where I need to stitch some things down. So all of these pieces with the pins in what I'll do is I'll find a thread that's probably green. If I can find a green that's similar I will use that just just so you can't really see it and I'll literally just stitch down on all of these things where the pins are just to, to hold it in place. I thought this was quite an interesting elegant solution for light coming through trees so when we start to put the tree trunks in we'll have a difference in in light there so that's why I've got the sort of stripy bits here and then I think I'm going to when this has been stitched down is do another overlay of organza um, probably in the blush I would have thought. The green might be a little bit bright at this point. I think there's going to be another layer in between. I think we should stitch this bit down first. So I'm going to go and find some thread. Hopefully you were able to see some of what I was doing, but I hope you saw really clearly how to do this with the wool underneath and I'm sure you're in full agreement with me that it already looks like a hedgerow that is in the distance. I don't really know what to do, whether to stitch this down sort of underneath so you can't see it or to cut it off so that it's just loose and held in by some trees or something later on and I use a combination of zigzag and straight stitch just to hold things in place really. I've also sorted out the fabric that I'm going to use for the tree trunks but I think I'm just going to put this away and come back to it tomorrow. Okay so it's actually about a week later because there has been birthdays and general shenanigans and I wanted to make sure this was right and I didn't have these. So this is Cotton Perle and it's DMC and I thought these three colours particularly would work really well for bluebells. They're a little tiny bit more muted on camera than they are in real life. So I'll tell you the colours just in case you wanted to use them. So we've got 30, 333 and 32. So we've got those ones for the bluebells. And then the same for the leaves. I didn't really have anything for the colour of the leaves. Now they're not really this colour. This is slightly too olivey. But... In cotton perle they don't have a massive range. Having chosen the colours of the spring leaf glow as this, I actually really like these. Again, they're cotton perle number eight. So I've got 471, 581, 469. I've also got 580. So I ordered these last week and they came 
quite quickly. So I wanted those for the, the some of the detail. I want to use some tapestry wool as well. So obviously what's small in the background is we're going to just use fabric. And then as we get closer, we're going to use cotton perle for little bits of detail. And then as we get even closer to the foreground towards the bottom here, where there is nothing, we're going to use uh, tapestry wool in the same sort of colours as these. So before we do any of that, we're going to be looking at this. So we've got some green organza here. Right, so if I'm going to add this on here, I can just put this on and we won't need to worry about this bit underneath because this will hold it down, especially once we start getting some different layers. Do you remember we were going to use some of this and some of this, which is shot with gold. I've also got a pale green one as well. So we can really, really layer it up, which would be great. So I'm wondering if this needs to go on yet. Well, the main thing is I don't need to worry about the hedgerow. I might just go in and trim the top of this. And I'm just going to be like quite uneven. So that's answered that question. So we really don't need to worry about this now because that's all going to be held in place by other stuff. I'm not going to bother to trim this either or this because I think you start to get a build up of depth and stuff. So next we're going to start working on one very small section because I wanted to give you the idea and I think it's just too confusing if you're watching me do the whole thing. So we are going to work quite intensively on this section here and I've chosen this because it's got some interesting stuff going on with the background fabric. Okay, so I have actually ironed all of these. I went searching through for anything I thought might be useful at all. So this I know I wanted for the path. That's going on one side. This is for tree trunks. So is this. I think this probably is too. So I'm just sorting out all my tree trunk fabric. I think that's it. I think that's literally all I found. And this is all I found for bluebells. I am really, 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 really short of fabric. I couldn't find anything else other than these. So we'll make it work with what we've got. So what we need to do is start looking at how to build these parts up. So there's going to be tree trunks that run this way, maybe something like this, because this is faded into the distance. Obviously, it's tra far too thick at the moment. It's got to be narrower than that. Remember, we have pretty much truncated our trees. We're not going to see a huge amount. We're just going to see the old branch, a few bits of leaves and a trunk. OK, and then we're going to do some arrangements of the bluebells. I'm only going to do this to here because... Although I need that covered in fabric, it doesn't need to be covered in the only sort of purpley blue that I have. So I can just cover it with something else that I have spare. And then it might be that we want to layer this, that there's bluebells on this part. And in which case we would cut the base of this trunk and this would be the bottom of it here. So it would disappear there. It's better if I just show you with another one. So this could be another trunk here. And then we might want some more like pale blue bells sort of here. Remember this one's gone now. So you might want like this or a bit of the darker, like a little piece in here. We might want to put a tiny little bit of dark in here. And I always try and do uneven edges. We do not want straight parts at this. It's not, it's not that kind of picture. If you go out into the nature, the nature is not straight. So we start getting some build up of colours. So you can see that the carpet of bluebells is behind, it's in front, it breaks up the space. So I probably will only work to about this part here and then actually knock it all back with, you guessed it, a layer of organza. I don't think I want to put it over the trees. I think I literally just want to put it over here and I'll just do a sort of asymmetric piece that runs across you know there's not going to be a regular shape at all that runs across these bluebell parts just to kind of warm them up a bit and you can do multi layers of that so as with the pink with the purple on top so it's probably going to be a combination so i think the best thing for me to do and i would if this is you as well um, is just cut little sort of slithers lots and lots of little slithers. i'll show you i'll show you me cutting a sliver as you cut I want you to pull the scissors like this. Like we're going for all the opposites of what you do for a straight line. So I'm just going to pull it and cut like that. So it's got like little curvy bits on it. And we're going to do some little bits like that. 
and then we can layer it up and we can get some definition and by definition I mean definition of this colour. What it's going to look like, it's going to look like the sun is coming through the trees and hitting the colour of the bluebells in different ways and this will work with any sort of carpet of flowers that you want to do in a woodland. It's the same kind of theory so if we have lots of this and then I'll do some of the sort of candy pink as well. So there's all our bits there. And then one last thing is I do need to refer to the sort of inspiration photo again, just to look at the tree tracks in the distance and to look at how wide they are. Cause obviously the further something away is, the smaller it looks. And then the other thing is I know that the sun is coming from this direction, okay? That means that the sun will be hitting the trunks even if they are in the distance. So I found this which would work to make the lighter part of the tree trunk and I suspect it will go something like, like this on the edge here. This inside bit would be straight because as light hits the surface and it has a cut off point of how far around it can finish. Unless there's like masses of lumps and bumps here, this line is gonna be almost pretty straight. So it's fine to use that side. Obviously this bit needs to be a little bit narrower to make it a smaller tree. I might even have to cut this in half, but I have another piece here for doing another tree. So, you know, I can do another one like this and you're starting to get like the look of trees. Remember, this is all going to be knocked back with um, different organzas as well. But finding that you've got very clear delineation between one area and another, like on a tree trunk, you it will actually make it look like there are more trees there anyway. And it will look more believable as a little woodland. So I just wanted to have a have a quick chat about that. This is what I was showing you yesterday. This is what it will sort of look like when it's done. And you might see that I've done some little bits and pieces here. This is the organza, the shot green. I just wanted to give you some of the idea. Remember, this is not the important bit. This is just for some interest in the background, the green, the glow of it all. When showing you how to do this yesterday, I think probably the easiest way of doing it is to do it in sections it will still look like this when it's done but at the moment i'm in the predicament where i have all of the bluebell bit here that is loose and will need ironing on and then i've got these tree trunks and things and some of it goes behind and some of it goes on top but i remembered a thing so if we take this bit here for example this is a really good one to illustrate with what I think would be the easiest thing to do would be to get the bulk of this bluebell fabric on here ironed on ready to stitch down then what we can do is you can literally lift this piece up you see and then it only needs to be able to tuck into this part well with this method you always end up with a piece that's not can you see how much is not ironed on there so it would be really easy to tuck the trunks in I think the best thing is to definitely get all of the bluebell material ironed on even if it's not stitched on and that would give me a few more options i need to work back to an area where there's nothing coming across bluebell fabric so those are my saved trees for now 
So we've got a little bit of sort of background now and it will be easier to build it up in layers because this is actually where all of those bits of green should go is onto these trees. So the next thing I need to do is just keep working my way down these bluebells. So I've tried to keep the last layer quite wide. Okay, just before I go and iron all this on, you'll just have seen me adding in some strips just to edge it. It really won't matter at all. It's just to make it look nice when it goes around the side of the canvas, but it's not part of our picture. Here's the photograph. So here's the blue part, and then the path you can see runs from sort of where this field is and this hedgerow and the blue and the background. So the path runs, there's like mostly bluebells across there, you can barely see the path. And there's all trees that are gonna go all across there as well. And then it comes round here and then it comes towards you straight for a bit and then it comes off just here. Now I can change my mind if I don't like it, as long as I haven't stitched it down, I can peel it off carefully and cut it away and put something else on. So, to the ironing board. So, this is where the experiment went. This is the zigzag bit that I did, and I was trying to mimic these two trees here, which you can barely see, but I can see them really clearly. I thought, oh, I'll just set off with the machine and do some odd bits. A lot of this you won't even see because there's more tree trunks to come in front of it. So it's just that air of clutter in the sort of foresty area so I think I'm gonna do a bit more of that and then I need to work on this whole section because these are all quite spindly trees here so these are the spindly trees here and then there's like a stand of bigger trees but obviously I've already started doing this bit and there are trees in there there's just less trees to the front then I also thought it was time to put in the path I'm starting to get the look of it so I'm a little bit close to it there but there's the path anyway. And then the hardest bit for laying it out and how much space it takes up is this, just underneath. So there's this, you've got the sky, and you've got like a hedgerow and then a field. I think it's a stone wall. And then you've got the bluebells. So I think I found something I can use for a stone wall. This is from Oliver Twists and it's called Throaster's Waste. Okay, so if you've never seen it before, this is what it is. It's just silk strands. I think this is at the end of the spinning process when they're pulling the, the fibres off of the whatever the bit is. But these are the bits that are left at the end that they can't, you know, they can't pull and do any more spinning. It's just not going to work. And I think this looks like stone wall colours. So I think for this stone wall here, I think I'm going to put some of this along here and then stitch it in probably by hand. I have decided that I'm going to get in a few more tree trunks and things. So some of these can be stitched in. I will go and do a little bit more detail in the back and um, I, I think this works. I'm quite happy with this. It, I want that clutter in the background, um, but I don't want it going, oh, that's lots of zigzagging. So I need to make sure that I'm doing it properly and that it's small enough and irregular enough for us not to be going, that's a lot of zigzagging. Okay, I've just done gazillions of tiny little bits and pinned them all on and now they are going to the sewing machine and I'm working on this bit before I stitch down this very first bit and put in the stone wall. Like I've got to assess all the different pieces that I want because I can't go back and put them on afterwards so I want plenty of clutter. There's going to be more over this but I just really want to start building up the tree stuff and I'm very happy. There's gonna be more here, but I think these are gonna be more forwards because you can see here, they start to come forwards. And then this bit here, which is kind of this sort of bit, I'll put some more bits in and then bring the big, several big trees down to the front because there's quite a space at the back. I did this really cool thing that I, it worked so well, which was taking the width of the strip that I wanted and then just slitting it down a little bit and then just pulling it off. When it's stitched down, it'll it'll just look like a branch like I did here. Oh, wish me luck at the sewing machine because this bit is a bit fiddly. It is a bit fiddly, I'm not going to lie, but I think it's so worth it in the end. I think it's really 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 effective okay finally i have stitched down all of these background um tree trunks and i think you can really see my vision 
now um, and I just wanted to quickly show you before I do any more because we're just about to start stitching the bluebell pieces here and then I can start putting these trees in where they're supposed to go. I need to stitch some of this bluebell stuff on so I need to choose some threads and I've got a horrible feeling because those are my kind of favourite colours, purples and lilac-y, lavender-y colours. That's, yeah, there's a massive gap in here. say this bit is probably the last faffy part by I'll have to constantly swap my thread. I'll have to start with the palest one to come in across here. This one's got caught somewhere so and obviously the amount of stitching here has really compressed, started to compress the fabric. I might be all right with the other layers but this one, this one's got to come off because it's it's huge. There's so, so much extra fabric in that. for a little update i'm on my last lot of trees hopefully on the photograph that you can see they are actually quite regular if you look at how many trees there are but this green bit here i quite like that space in there i think it sort of relieves a lot of the the heaviness if you like i think probably <laughs> what i should have done is slightly less on the back row and kept a few more for the front row i think i got a little bit carried away but this bit here i absolutely love it i don't think i don't want to do any more to that i don't want any more trees in there i'm really really happy with how that looks and the grouping and everything so i just just need to mess around with these trees and try and get this balance a little better and then i'll stitch in those last trees so that's what i'm off to do oh no on camera it looks really good it looks really really good Okay, so I think this is where this video ends. You can see I have conquered the trees and we've got some good light going on and some fluffiness. I'll put some more of that in in the embellishment video. I am so nearly there to be able to start embellishing it. It is fiddly, but I hope you agree that it's it's worth it. It's worth the effort. It is fun, I have to say. I, I don't know, I must have worked about seven, eight hours today. I don't know. I just wanted to keep going because I really, really enjoyed it and um, sort of get into the flow and trying to place trees in the right place and, and make it sort of believable but not necessarily photorealistic. I went out and I bought the canvas today ready to mount this up on and I've decided what I'm going to do is leave it here. You get the idea and if you want to have a go make sure you've got a good reference image where you can find the shapes and how it works and think about how to build the image like I have spent quite a long time trying to describe and then in the next video I'm going to show you how 
to embellish it and make it look even more believable as a landscape and then I will mount it up onto the canvas as well so we can see how pretty it looks because at the moment although this is looking good and if this was my first attempt I would be super super pleased with it they do look like they're floating in space a little bit some of these back colors need knocking back a bit there needs to be some mistiness we need to get some details in there needs a lot more sort of green greenery bits like all of this I've got to do that section over there I'm going to do some embroidery I'll do some machine embroidery and some hand embroidery and all of that so I thought it'd be really really nice to do a whole focus video on the embroidery and the embellishment because those are the details that people are always asking how do you do that like how I did the really really terribly successful I was so happy with this stone wall. That was great, just using the stitches on my machine. But I will go back and reference that again in the next video. So thank you very much for joining me. And thank you for being so patient. It's a long and involved process, this, but it is super fun. And I can't recommend it highly enough if you have a go. And you really, you don't need too many bits and pieces. This is literally, what, three, three or four bits of brown. This is all I had. That's all I had and they just happened to be the right kind of colours and, and it works really well. So you can use whatever you've got on hand. So thanks as always and I will see you very soon. Bye.